Abyss taking on Team Queso. Winner will find themselves in the semifinals on Saturday. They will indeed, and the loser will be facing relegation. That is not something that the side on the Team Abyss wants to be doing again, as they were right back there last week. They want to come out swinging. They want to show that they have recovered here. Team Queso as well wants to show that they deserve to be here. They are just getting better time and time again, as they are now both sides going and finding these initial aggressive jungle rotations. Going to get a little bit of a Sage Golem steal for both of these teams. Nothing uh, too far off the mark as Team Queso will get themselves a pretty solid little jungle invade, securing two of those minions. As Shirko will try to get some knowledge and some poke res. The meanwhile is level two, so it has both those abilities available, but does not end up hitting the whip. So no Nene will be following suit. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? That's okay, that's fair. Watch me whip, now watch yeah, me Yeah, yeah, no, no, I know what it was referencing, Jump. <laughs> I was just arguing the use of it. As we see the aggressive rotation coming in here from the side of Team Abyss trying to find that Mike Golem deny it. They are going to be able to grab that here nicely done as Jarvis and crew are going to look to reinitiate there. The Red Stallion with the heal coming in as well, denying that. So nice little counter engage. There is the first blood coming in from Team Abyss. Team Queso thinking they had an opening and Abyss shutting the door right on their fingers. Ow. Ow, indeed, it is going to be Team Queso having to uh, make themselves a little bit of a reset here as two of those kills go into two very efficient individuals. When you can put that early gold into the hands of the Omen, into the hands of the Tomb, you're going to find yourselves in a much more advantageous position as the Spirit Sentinel will fall as well. A very early thousand and a half gold lead as Arena of Violet and Coco will also secure themselves around this Abyssal Dragon. That's going to be the bada boom. Abyss already going in a good spot. Uh, that's the bada boom and the bada bing there. That is the bada ding as that gold just ticking off over the way of Team Abyss. That was the power of that early game Fennec. You let him just do whatever he wants, and oh man, he's able to just rip these objectives. And we've talked about Arena of Violet. When he's able to pee on these marksman junglers, things do definitely work out in his favor. The three-man knockup, meanwhile, coming out of Grizzly Q. Coco Ooh. picking themselves up a kill. Make that two for the Wonder Woman. Amazonian power reigns supreme as two more kills go into the pockets. Babara is going to try to go on the back on a Coco, but all of the members of Abyss are on the rebuttal, and so it is going to be a one-for-one -one trade in that area. But what are they going to lose in the process? A mid lane tower. Not worth at all, and that is the definition of why Max can work, but sometimes and very often times doesn't. That was your solo queue, Max, right there and then. That was a solid initiation. We talk about Wombo Combo, and we talk about what just came out there, the Earth Splitter with those bracelets of submission as well. Abyss able to just chime with their CC beautifully. There's a great Endure coming in from Ruiz. He is such a playmaker. We're going to talk about him a lot in this series, but it was not enough to save his team in that situation. He was able to survive, but at the cost of everybody else. The cost of everyone as little, uh, little nice little Rudolph cosplay that you got coming out of the Fennec. Uh, you know, a little, little slingshot, but that slingshot is throwing damaging darts. It's steel balls that he's throwing off. Little ball bearings, they did not feel When, not he, get, feel when he gets that four stack going, it feels like little sticks of dynamite he's throwing at you, because that AOE splash is dirty as well, coming in that Fennec. Again, when you let him get rolling, he actually does shred fairly early here, and Arena Violet is doing a great job of playing the marksman role. How I think we're starting to see this role evolve, and I think it's how it's supposed to be played. Weaving in and out of that jungle, not just always sitting back and playing conservative, but finding those moments to be with the team, help get those picks, have the damage there early as well. And you have to think about as well what Team Abyss is doing to shut down the strategy that Team Queso decided at the very beginning. They went with double punish in this game, so they knew that they wanted to have this early game aggression and counter jungling potential, but with Team Abyss's advantage, it has essentially shut down any opportunity to do so. It has indeed. I mean, they needed to commit to that, but right now they are committing very much so to this sneaky jungle push play up here. Uh-oh, there's the hissy bit, the fall off the red stallion, the knock up the stun, the wailing blade, the fa. Ah, that is a very dead hero. That is how you correctly execute a party push, but now they're diving underneath the tower because the Q and Fo are going in. Shirko, that's going to have the splash damage there nicely done as well, and that is going to be the aroma falling, staying a little bit too long. That is Team Abyss, the retaliation with the kill on the top. Trying to get a little bit of extra damage. Shirko will try to use that ultimate, the but it's not going to be enough of a snipe. You're right, the body block's going to come in 
Arena of Violet as well as Grizzly Q in the meanwhile are going to get themselves a nice little counter jungle. And so what seemed like a great tower dive at the very beginning for Team Queso was rebuttaled immediately by solid rotations of Team Abyss. Yeah, it was instantly sort of denied there. Like, well, I appreciate the sentiment, Team Queso, but no, this is what's actually going to happen here. And they committed a decent amount of time to sitting in that bush too. Like, you know Abyss's radar was kind of going... Wait, hang on, something's something's not right here. And they were instantly then able to make that rotation follow up there because Obis realized Queso committed every resource to that kill. And so now as we are rounding up on the six minute mark, our first milestone of the game, thus when the Dark Slayer spawns, Abyss finds themselves 6,000 gold ahead Four kills, but more importantly, it's those three very early towers that have secured themselves a very solid position early. Two dragons, a couple of towers. Team Abyss is looking very solid, but it is not over yet for Team Queso. They still have the potential here to rally in this game. Their mid-game team fighting is dirty. This composition, the Lubu, the Ryoma, the Max, if they can line up all their CC, oh boy. But of course, it's hard to do when your opponent gets a Dark Slayer. I love this decision by Abyss. They created just enough of a distraction with the Wonder Woman on the side lane, as well as the roam out of Grizzly Q to make Team Queso think that Abyss was simply on a retreat and recall. But instead, they would secure themselves that Dark Slayer and giving them that much more pushing power early in the game. It was really just all about the mind games. And this is where Abyss, I think the slightly more veteran squad is finding that here. They've had a little bit more experience here in the Valor series, and it's showing just the way they're making some of these small decisions as well as the fights are breaking out in the jungle and going towards the mid here. The Abyssal Dragon also being soloed now by the Fennec as well. That is the power of this hero once he goes online, his ability to cre clear out these crucial objectives and towers as well. Watch how fast Arena Violet takes on this tower. And not only do you have the tower taking ability there, but a nice little quick proxy wave to make that that much quicker onto the tower take. And so as a result, you're going to see the ultimate being popped out to create a little bit of zoning. And Arena Violet's not even going to fight. He's just going to be able to take down the tower. Meanwhile, the other members of Abyss are going to go on an obliteration. And it's going to be the queso that is going to be served up hot and fresh. The dip is there. The chips are with to boot. And just like that, it's going to be Team Abyss doing the last little ticks of damage. Seven and a half minutes in the game. They're going to secure the game one victory.